Okay, a resource-based economy, an economic model. What is an economic model? In the most simplistic terms, you could say an economic model shows variables and the dynamic processing or interaction of said variables to meet production and distribution demands and anything else generally related to economic functionality. That's obviously a very loose categorization and definition I've just given, especially if you go back and research the various economic models that have been produced you know, by economists, monetary economists over the past 200 years. You will enter into just a mind-blowing world of risk assessment and stochastic behavioral models and interest rate to exchange rate protocols, arbitrage conditions, service vector evaluations, rational choice theories, price equilibrium, attributes, and so on and so forth. It's uh, fascinating, truly fascinating. However, as a point of consistency, since I'm on the subject, nowhere in these highly intellectualized, sophisticated, novel, creative, and in often internally sound, structurally, logical expressions, will you find anything about planetary resources, Will you find anything about the science of creating proper goods? Nowhere will you find anything about longevity, efficiency of production in the sense of conservation, or creating anything that would reflect true economic efficiency, which is, of course, the intelligent management of all of our resources and the methods of mining, culminating, producing, and distributing those resources. Zero. Virtually all economic monetary models simply revolve around various notions of labor and value, which is an absolutely convoluted concept, savings, interest rates, and again, a long string of you know, previously aforementioned variables, which are utterly decoupled from every kind of natural resource and processes on this planet or anything tangible. And the processes, the economic matrices, uh, are nonsensical and absolutely unrelated. They are abstractions of thought using classic linear equations to depict variables in closed, finite systems that have numerous presumptions about what they represent when there is absolutely no linear direction, no linear referent to anything truly tangible at all. You know, if you go to the work of the high priests of modern market theory, Ludwig von Mises, F.A. Hayek, Milton Friedman, John Maynard Keynes, Adam Smith, you find some wonderfully articulate and perfectly sound reasoning, you know, but that reasoning exists within, within a closed set of variables and a series of presumptions are always evident. And again, those presumptions have nothing to do with anything that's provably tangible, no physical reference, these huge projections and speculations on human behavior. Economists, when you break them down, all the individuals I've just mentioned, they're not scientists. They're not basing anything on actual scientific evaluation. They are simply philosophers. And that's all every monetary economic theorist has ever been, is a philosopher of the means of production and distribution, not scientists in the sense that they actually have a physical reference to balance and test their models. In fact, if you look at the criticisms that, that Hayek and Mises and Keynes and uh, all of the others, when they're criticized, they tend to fall back on the same basic set of defenses which are more or less comparison oriented. For example, um, they'll say, and I've heard this countless times, when anything's brought up about problems with the market system, such as rampant poverty and abuse and slave labor, they say, well, you know what? Say what you want about poverty and conflict, but history has proven that capitalism and the monetary structure has created more wealth and efficiency and high quality goods and quality of life than any system we've ever known, so there. No. The only thing that's created prosperity in the human population, the only thing that's responsible 
for human development and the growing population which has been going exponentially. The only thing that's created a higher standard of living on this planet are in fact two things. The advent of technology and the discovery of cheap hydrocarbon energy. That's it. That is what has driven this seemingly advanced society, which is actually quite in reverse when you look at it. The quality of life of most human beings is actually in reverse right now because of this exact same system. For the exact same reasons that gave the illusion of prosperity to begin with. This system has in fact run its course. What you're seeing is, has been a cosmic delusion. It has been a complete coincidence that technological innovation coupled with the emergence of an abundance of energy that's cheap all over the planet has coupled with the advent of this economic system called the market system. Now, I know right now all the, uh, all the monetary indoctrinated individuals that support this system are chomping at the bit right now on the edge of their seats going, but wait a minute, the reason we've had progress in technology is because competition has motivated that progress. Well, is that really true? Is there any evidence for that, really? Have any of the major contributions of technology come, in, come from people that have been outspoken about their interest to make money off of it? I don't think so. If you research Daniel Pink and his work on motivation, which is basically a compilation of numerous psychological studies about what it means to be creative about versus what it means to be mechanical, you tend to find that creativity, hence technological innovation, is actually driven not by competition whatsoever. On the other side of the spectrum, it's very, very clear at this point that technological innovation is now currently being hindered by the market system and the values and the processes therein. With the need for scarcity, with the need to maintain establishments, we have such profound technology today sitting on the sidelines that it will not come to fruition because it will override existing establishments and it is simply not profitable to create the type of sustainability that these new technological advents create. So three points. A, the greatest contributors to the scientific innovation have not done it for money and you can research that thoroughly. B, Psychological motivation is not driven by competition for creative invention. And C, right now we live in a state of social evolution within market theory that is actually hindering technological process because of the very dynamics of the system itself. Monetary economics exists in the same form it has always existed as nothing but a religion. It's based on closed presuppositions which are essentially immutable in the eyes of those who practice it. Going back to Adam Smith and the quote, invisible hand. What the hell is that? The invisible hand, that, that's it? I mean, you gotta be kidding. Is there any way to test this invisible hand? No, not at all. And it's a presupposition of some type of monetary god and it's absolutely insane. It operates with circular reasoning, circular reasoning in a closed kind of mind log, just like any other religion. And it's absolute blasphemy, of course, when you choose to articulate anything out of the uh, presuppositions of that belief system. Now, please note that I don't mean to be insulting towards those minds I mentioned, Ludwig von Mises, Hayek, Friedman. They're very brilliant individuals uh, within the confines of the variables they choose to acknowledge. Uh, just like there can be very brilliant individuals within any religion within the confines of the philosophy that they choose to accept while they blinker out everything else. But it, the bias is so transparent. I have a book by, by Ludwig von Mises called The Anti-Capitalistic Mentality. Now, just the name of that just reeks of outrageous presupposition and arrogance, does it not? The very statement, the anti-capitalistic mentality presupposes that anyone who is against the capitalist system or the market system must be of a particular form of preconditioned mentality. And therefore, any objective and tangible open conversation is immediately void because it's just a mentality. If that isn't religious stigma, I don't know what is. Now, I want to be clear here because the, if you read the Mises work and the defense of the capitalist system by many works, by many different economists, they actually support it very, very well within the confines of the arguments that they choose to recognize. 
I want to clearly point out that the Zeitgeist Movement and the resource-based economy, what our angles are, what our problems are, are in fact very, very different from any other objections to the economic theories put forward. While there are certainly overlaps, ours is explicitly different, and I have yet to hear any economic rebuke of anything we say that isn't simply a projection of earlier arguments which they feel have already been previously debunked. It is nothing more than a religion, and I want to make sure everyone thoroughly understands that. And when you approach people that believe in these ideas, you have to understand that very often your logic will be cut off because they will blinker out information in their own schemata, whether they're even conscious of it or not. That's the power of belief. And unfortunately, some people really will never understand rational associations because of their prior condition in life. But that's for another conversation. Okay, that's enough of that. I apologize for that tangent. Let's, uh, let me get back on track here and talk about a resource-based economy. Because once you understand the ground-up approach of a resource-based economy, it immediately makes void all notions of prior economic monetary theory because it simply doesn't make any sense otherwise. Uh, the difference between monetary economic theory and a resource-based economy is that we are actually taking account of what sustains life. We're actually taking account of raw materials. True economic theory can only manifest from the properties of all raw materials that exist on this planet, coupled with the processes that organize and navigate the mining, production, distribution, updating, waste recycling, and all other attributes required to maintain stasis, abundance, and hence sustainability.